We're on. We're on. Just like that, Just boys. like We're that. On the air. Live 58 seconds ago. There you go. There you I'm go. Sean. And I'm Dave. And I'm Maurice. And this is the Barstools and Band Talk Bullpen. You'll notice we have our new Molson Canadian sponsored uh, backdrop back there. We love Molson. Um, Molson Coors. After. Thank you, Matt Muse. We'll, we'll introduce our guests here in a second. We're doing a two-parter tonight, guys. Yep. Very exciting. We're getting that big that we have multiple. We're like Letterman. <laughs> Only Letterman not getting paid. Howard Stern. Right. <laughs> Just not, not as funny. Uh, thanks to Molson for sponsoring us. Thanks to ePrinted. Here at Monty's, we're uh, second uh, bullpen in a row that we're doing. A channel great te- location. Channel Technologies. Channel Technologies. Um, Lots of stuff going on at Monty's. Everything seems to be selling out, which is amazing. Uh, maximum overdrive here Saturday night. Four March, nights from now. Yep. Four sleeps. March 13th. We can't say what it is. The room looks amazing. We can't show you anything, but it looks very, very cool. You had to buy tickets and show up to see what it is. It's and cool. And if you are buying tickets and you are going to be here, drink lots of booze. Cause, uh, lots drink, of- drink lots of Molson products. <laughs> Molson. Nancy at Monty's.ca for tickets. So without further ado. So our topic. <clears throat> well, Maurice kind of at the tail end of the last show brought up it would be really cool to, to do a, a piece on social media because uh us old dogs seem to be struggling with the way that it's done and i said well there's there's mo came up with a person and i came up with two people that i know are doing it what really well so to my right i have the handsome the talented mr matt muse and Mr. Zach McKenna. Uh, and if anybody's wondering, yes, he is my younger brother. <laughs> right on. Good one. Just Good not one. as ugly. Just not as ugly. There you go. Uh, or as funny. So um, anyway, so guys, thank you very much for, for being here. Um, so I guess what we want to tackle, Matt, we'll start with you. So um, we're Frequency alumni. I, I replaced you in the Frequency, which is kind of funny. You were in there for a year, a little over a year. Yeah. Played with Kyle and Sunday Punch and Seven Day Weekend. and. Yeah, yeah. And then you went to Satori. Yeah, I was playing with Satori and and kind of doing like Kyle started playing with uh, Kyle go, started brother. playing with the yeah, there we go. Kyle started uh, the frequency kind of back up and was doing some gigs. So I was uh, trying to fill in as best as I could, but I was doing the Satori gigs too, right? So and you thankfully really, asked me to do a couple of fill-in shows, and that was great. Of course, killed it. Yeah, it, uh, and and um, Matt actually comes out and plays keyboards and guitar with us, and absolutely crushes that, and does a lot of backups, and we always have a lot of fun. Is plays there, guitar, there plays there bass, yeah. I was say, sings. Is there you can't play. <laughs> no, that's right. And now you have your um, yeah. What are you doing on April? Tw- well, we'll talk about that later. Um, so, yeah. um, what do you do? So you have Green Light Go with Anthony. Yeah. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah. So Green Light Go is uh, our original project. It's just Anthony and I, and um, yeah, we've released uh, quite a few songs now. I mean, we, we had a lot. What's of quite a few? Uh, I guess five songs yeah, that's now, quite a few. which which is a lot uh, these days. <laughs> yeah, <no laughs> we don't just pump out an album anymore. It's and like, you guys you know. do them like a, sing- a single at a time, sort of. Thing? Yeah, we've that's released yeah. only singles. Yeah, we we were we were thinking about a new EP. normal. Yeah, honestly, it's it's a better way to go, at least especially for us in pop music. Um, but yeah, we had a lot of momentum coming at the start of 2020. And then, uh, yeah, so that was that was a bad time to have some momentum. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Everything's going great right until March. So well, yeah. I remember you released that first song, and didn't you get a million streams or something on a couple of different platforms? That was our second release, uh, this, uh, Your Call with King Crew. Right. Um, yeah, and uh, it, it, it started to do really well organically right off the hop. We landed a lot of big playlists. Spotify was doing well. Um, so we we ran with it, um, and and our YouTube our lyric video on YouTube, um, it, it was it was three hundred thousand in like the first two days or something. Wow. It was crazy, and uh, now it's at three and a half million, I think, which is, is crazy. But the big thing is we pushed on radio, so we we went to radio with the track, and uh, we were lucky enough to have uh, quite a few Virgin radios play the song for a while, and some other uh, stations across Canada. So. Yeah, that was that was part of all that momentum that we well, had going. Well, that's a nice segue to this next. The question I have is like, first, so it's uh, organic. Why don't you explain to people what organic is all about? Because that's that's the that's the catch one of the catch words of the year, sort of thing, right? Yeah. Us old guys, okay? Yeah. Well, I mean, it depends. It's it's kind of tricky. It depends on what part you're talking. Because I say organic, like if you go out and you, if I always thought that organic meant that you know you do it like the, the old spun way where. You, know, you get your you get your followings together. You get share groups. You do this and you pass things, and it's all manually done. But is that is that is that really what organic comes down to? Sort of thing. Where you actually have people in place just there making sure, like they manually get it to different piles of people. To some extent, that yeah, that's always I think going to be a big part of it. Um, but when I'm talking about it, I'm specifically kind of saying um, doing really well uh, with like with playlists and stuff. 
the second that you get in with with like a big playlist or something like that, you're, you're can you pre- explain to us how you, how you get into it, how, how you get how that happens? There's definitely a lot of different ways to do it. Um, I mean, I'm no expert, but uh, but now when you submit uh, to when you submit your song onto all of the streaming platforms, so uh, Spotify and Apple Music and all that, um, it, there's already things that you can you can automatically uh, put your song up for. Playlist. That's right. They'll, now, they'll, they'll is that decide. all free, or do you got to pay for some of that? Um, well, it depends. Like, it depends on what distributor you're going with. Which it's normally not free, but it's not crazy expensive or anything. Okay. But I mean, you can also go through. There's other private distributors and stuff that can help you try and get on playlists and stuff. Or like, you could just like also kind of organically, I guess, like you could seek out who are these curators from certain playlists right. and, and yeah. see what you can do. Or maybe you know you know somebody and stuff. Um, yeah, and that's what you have to do if you're not, you know, if you don't already have a huge following. I mean, you might have a decent following, but, like, if you're trying to get, like, millions of views and stuff, then you're, you're going to need help to get your music out there, right? And the criteria. And that's yeah. So organic by itself would mean you couldn't, I mean, you only have a million people in Nova Scotia, for example, so you're going to have to branch outside of our, our territory, our geographic region, in order to keep things going. And I wanted to ask you another question. So what genre would you call your music? So for Green Light Go, it's definitely pop at its okay. core. It's It's... We started off a little more uh, on the electronic side of pop too. Okay. Uh, we we definitely were aiming a little more organic pop uh, going in, but it, it's just the way that it worked. It was mostly just kind of producers steering it a certain way too, which which we liked and we went with it. And and more importantly, it was working. Like people were liking it, so we just were rolling with it. So and so here's the beauty of live in a bar. You can hear people when they're laughing, and it kind of gives a really neat atmosphere. So um, yeah, love it, love it, love it. Hold that for a second because yeah. we're gonna get uh, we're gonna get deep dive into here. So we'll go over to Zach. So it's a really funny story. So um, Zach, all of a sudden, I had no idea. I mean, I've he's heard me play in bands for years and stuff. I had no idea he was he was interested in hip hop and rap and um, I was like oh, yeah and then I started hearing their stuff and you guys and I know it because I hear you guys all the time you're putting out a ton of stuff all the time yeah so um, I guess we started March of last year me and uh, me and a good friend of mine uh, laughing we um, we, were, we were in quarantine he was living at, at the house with us and um, we started to really start to dive into making music seriously and um, we probably made over the two and a half, three months in quarantine, we probably made about 40, 50 songs, like, just, like, wake up every day, like, make a new song, like, it was the perfect time it's to crazy. do it, and kind of experiment and stuff, right, because, like, yeah. like beats, you know, beats, everything, word lyrics, the whole thing, like, yeah, yeah like, yeah. Uh, wow, we probably make, like, two, three songs a day, just because, like, that's all we could do, and that's all we really wanted to do anyways, and just kind of, like, you know, kind of, like, uh, perfect, like, a sound, and what was working for us, and, you know, um, showing friends of ours, like, uh, see what they would like, what they wouldn't like, and, and uh, once we started actually releasing music like exclusively together, like we started releasing a, a new single like uh, every few weeks, just to kind of get like more music out there. Right. Content, it's a big deal. Yeah. yeah. And this exactly. is ZTF or ZTF is. It? Yeah, that's why I go as ZTF. Yeah. So, and I know you guys are doing that a lot. So you you've actually been able to um, get your music heard by some you know pretty pretty important people in the industry and you're on a couple of compilations and yeah so for anybody that's and i know matt knows how to do it and then back in the day when we tried to do it it was a different thing but how did that come about well um me and laughing and uh another friend of mine brought and we we made a song um and we released it and uh there was a youtube page that had like a couple million subscribers that um they had a link in their in their Instagram bio that you could like submit to them, and it was like fifteen bucks, and you just submit your song, and and uh, if you want to do Spotify playlists or um, or a YouTube post, and then um, they basically review it, and then in like a five to seven days they would send you an email and basically say what's your Instagram, uh, you've been approved, and so we got approved for their Spotify playlist, but instead of like paying another fifteen bucks, waiting another week, we just decided, oh, well, like what if we get a YouTube post too? Like would that be okay? And they're like. Yeah, sure. So it got posted on there, and that one uh, got like a, I think it's at like a hundred and twenty thousand streams right now, which is like wow. most I've ever gotten. I'm pretty proud of that, and you know, just reaching out to people really is like the the He's biggest thing you do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. We'll, we'll come in at about twenty five hundred by the end of this, <laughs> yeah. but yeah. Um, but to the point, 
Um, and we talk about a lot. So what's going on a lot now with some of these shows is people are going back to the old school days of hustling where, you know, there may or may not be a guarantee and you got to sell tickets. That's really what you guys are doing on these different platforms. Is that a fair statement? Yeah, yeah. You still have to go out and, and, and do, do the hustling and, and, you know, get your legitimate fan base and stuff. It's, you know, it's like... like uh, Get in that mic, Matt. Get oh, right yeah, on. Sorry there, yeah. Um, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, like uh, playlists and... Um, and, and go, like, because uh, we did a similar thing that, with uh, a YouTube placement and stuff, right. too. And uh, that's all great, and it, it's it's to help build your, your, your following, but... It, it'll only go so far, right? Like you have to have a legitimate following at some point. And you gotta have, yeah. and you gotta keep pumping up music too. I mean, you just can't rely yeah. on one song. Or they want as soon as something gets going, they want the next one coming up the pipeline. I'm sure as well. So yeah, there's 30 yeah, years definitely. difference between our ages. Let's just say maybe maybe a little bit yeah, less whatever. for Maurice, oh, yeah, but something that, like that. Yeah. But Dave yeah. always does this to make he basically oh, yeah. drag us into the mud. Right? How yeah. how important is it still to get your music out there? Like, are you, do you do like a tour? Do you do like a festival? Do you do the concerts? I mean, how important is that? I mean. Uh, it definitely depends on what genre you're in, I think, okay. um, and where you're at in your your career, right? Okay. Like, yeah. I'm, I mean, the, a lot of the things I'm talking about right now, I'm talking about indie artists, like sure. the people that aren't yeah. under a label, a major label. And when kind. you say, I noticed you said, I mean, I'm not catching up, but you're saying like, you know, we, like you're talking about the, you, you just you two, or you're talking about your team? Because that's what you, I'd like to know about the team. Like, what kind of a team do you need to assemble? To get these kind of numbers and to get this traction and to get the, tra 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 the trajectory that you guys are on right now, I'm sure it's not just two of you guys sitting in a room thinking how you're going to do this. Yeah, I learned that pretty quick. I'm sure you know <laughs> quite a bit about how much, uh, you, how it's many lot, people. You need a village, involved. don't you? Yeah, it's crazy. It's like yeah. I, I always, I was like, I was beating myself up at one point. I, I know Anthony was feeling the same way too, and I'm sure lots of people do. Th like looking at other people that are starting to blow up and stuff and being like. How are they doing that by themselves? Like, how are all these They're things not. happening? Because they They're make it look not. like that. And that's that's actually interesting. That's just one of the things of social media, right? Like, you're seeing a highlight reel of everybody's life, right? Right. And uh, it's not it's not really reality, right? There's so much going on behind the scenes. Like, everyone's got like, you know, people who are who are helping them with with their social media, and you've got people who do media in the sense of like photos they, and do filmography. Do they start as fans stuff. or are they just friends? Fans? Are they people they sought out and hired? Like how? how I think how? it depends. Some people come up with, with their with people who are who are just kind of pop up. Who, yeah, but I think a lot of it are people in the industry. As you go, as the further you go along and the, the more momentum you get, the more people you end up meeting and yeah. and then there if there's a mutual that's kind of, if there's that's a mutual kind of beneficial school, isn't it? that's really yeah kind of that, that'll school. never it's, go it's away networking. it really is networking, it's networking. Yeah. that's yeah, never been. that's never going to go away there's like not very often can you just like you know uh, like get completely huge from just kind of like sitting in your bedroom no, like you still right. got to do a lot of work and and at some point even if you do kind of blow up that's just the start then you have to go out and start working and yeah. like sure. if you don't, if you don't want to do that work it's, it's not going to happen. Right, I mean, there's momentum, and you got to keep the momentum going. And yeah. momentum is a very hard thing to get and keep. And if you get it and stop it, and you know, just like in sales, yep. I mean, you know, yeah, you have to have momentum or it just dies. Now, in your in your genre, with what you're doing, I know you know you're doing a lot. Like you guys do a lot of comp. Uh, you guys do a lot of uh, collaborative collaborative work. Yeah. Right? And that's what that's that as 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 is that is that. Because you guys are all buddies, are you sharing your beats and you're sharing your music, or is it just because that's just the way to get? Is it once again? Is it the village? Is it the village kind of thought? Uh, I just think like for me and the guy that I mainly make music with, it's just kind of like we both push each other to kind of be like the best artist we can be. Mm -hmm. And like if like you know he's getting down one day about something, like I can pick him up and vice versa. So that's cool. I think that's a a big thing with artists. It's kind of like you know as like matt was saying like you got so many people and like he's saying they were getting beat up and stuff and it's really more so just for support i guess like you're only you can only be so mentally strong yourself so it's really good yeah. to have kind of like somebody else there to uh kind of lift you up when you need it your generation gets it though you know and i wouldn't say it's just in hip-hop although we did talk about that before but i see it with matt too talking about like how the fo different people that you collaborate with and you can network with and, and get information back and forth from because we kind of kept all that very private back and you know and Sean and I did when we first started you didn't want to give up your set list or yeah, your ideas trade or secrets but you guys share a lot of that information and for the collective good and you all move forward together which is pretty cool yeah I, I like that's that's still important like I mean there's there's gonna be a lot of people that are still gonna be secretive about, about sure. their things and stuff yeah. and it's still you know, it's still a business, especially the further you get up, the more you find out, at least for me, I'm finding out it's, it's a 
cutthroat business in, in a sense. And that's in most genres and stuff too, right? But um, I find that the people that seem to do the best are, are the people that are willing to work with people and realize that there's there's mutual beneficial relationships to be made there. And Perfect. that's that's how you like you know it's better to build each other up, man. If you're trying to build like push everybody else down, it's kind like, of how this thing you won't started get ahead. too. Like uh, yeah. in, the, in yeah. 2020, like a lot of careers, are you doing this this the fledgling stuff like the bar stools and band talk and the stuff I've been doing and all that. It's, we've been preaching it since the beginning. It's like the village. Like yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you can't do it by yourself. You got to have people yeah, with you in, in the group. And, and yeah. it just seems. And then the more attention you get collectively with people, it just it grows like that. Yeah. And so I, I definitely. guess that, that, that that's the, the the actual the concept is the same no matter what you're doing with. Like, and like in our, when when uh, when Stephanie comes up later, I'm sure like she has a different genre of work, but. It's it's the same concept, you know. Yeah, what I mean? right. It's the same. It's the same yeah. business model, you know. Definitely. Well, yeah. and the thing is, too, is I, I think timing has a lot to do with it because it, obviously, you know, everything that happened last year sucked. Definitely, mm. yeah. We, but you know, anybody that just decided that you know what it sucked, but I was going to do something, seemed to have some success. They did, you know, yep. they weren't sitting on their it took their a butts, pandemic. Yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. And the, and the people that are kind of complaining that it, 2020 wasn't good for them, I think were kind of I don't want to say they were caught in the headlights, but they just kind of were waiting for things to happen and. Um, like I said, I know you guys. I heard you down there all the time, um, and even yeah. got to the point where, well, you and Matt more or less met because I said to Matt, he's trying to come up with some beats. Can you give him some, a hand? And you know, and that was kind of right. the little networking thing that that got things started. And actually, it's the first time they met was tonight, but they've been talking quite a bit about yeah. stuff. So, yeah. So tell us about platforms, because like, again, like yeah. we're, we're a little old school. We're mm -hmm. Facebook guys, so we kind of yeah. get that. It seems yeah. to be easier. I have an Instagram account for Barstools. I really don't know how to use it very well. My 15-year-old daughter said if I paid her, she'd help me. There you go. <laughs> but, but right now we're kind of nonprofit. So, uh, <laughs> like, what works for you folks the best? Is it you know a social media stream like that, or is it YouTube? Is it Spotify? Is it you know iTunes? Like, what's the best platform for what you folks are trying to do? Um, do you want to go first, or? <laughs> I mean, um, Instagram is is good for like you know getting a uh, like. I guess like a starting ground for uh, and it's important for artists to actually like you know show their face because I know some people don't uh, like to show their face on social media for what like you know okay. insecure or whatever but some people um, wish Dave didn't show his face on social media <laughs> but anyway here we are but sure, I mean, go ahead. like um, like the fans want like if you're releasing music and your fans have never seen what you look like they're probably like pretty curious and like it's important to like you know show the fans like who you are as a person and I feel like it's mm. it's easier to connect like with your fans that way like showing your face and whatnot and like also just like being active on Instagram too mm -hmm. that's a big thing with social media is like if you're not if you're inactive like yeah. it's not really going to benefit you but as I, the more active you are and like that doesn't mean just like posting but also like interacting like with people yeah. in the comments and and like uh, right. like met, if people DM you like DMing them back and right you know, so on any given day now what okay let's talk Instagram so sure. you get up in the morning and you probably get up and say okay I got my Instagram thing to do what is your Instagram thing that you do routine yeah um usually uh if I have a song that like I just put out like I'll usually like blast a story like uh to go stream the song and uh I usually put the uh, the link for all my songs in my Instagram like bio. A photo or like a short little video, like a TikTok thing or something like that. Uh, sometimes, sometimes it'll just be like a like a funny picture or something yeah. like that, or like yeah. you know something that like people will like maybe like you if they if they just skip by it and then like oh wait a minute like they go back and see it and um, you know it's more so just kind of like you know building like a fan base that way and like I find like uh, being funny works for me like you know posting like funny pictures and that. How long have you been on Instagram doing that? Right since the beginning of the uh, the whole well, since you started. Well, I mean, I've I've had an Instagram account for like years now since probably like grade nine, grade ten. Right. When I was like fourteen, fifteen, but um, I didn't really start using it for music until like probably like around March when the pandemic started. Like, used, actually, like, you can't live without it, can you? I mean, as an artist, it's really hard to, especially now where like you know you can't travel or anything like right. that, like it's like social media is like it's a big thing and like everybody's on it and you know especially in like the hip-hop and like the pop like uh, genre music like um like young kids are going to be the ones who are really going to be listening to the music so you really have to cater to them man made a good point earlier and i have four daughters and it was nothing would drive me crazy more than they listen to a song or you started listening to the band they switch something listen is that this, can we listen to one freaking song? But they have a 15 second attention span, is what yeah. you said earlier. So yeah. that's why TikTok has been so important yeah. to them because that's all you get 15 yeah. seconds of fame, right? So, yeah, and that's uh, that's why I think uh, Instagram <laughs> Instagram introduced the took the uh, <laughs> it's more than 15 seconds. 
Sorry. Go ahead, Pat. Can you see that? <laughs> uh, yeah, Instagram. Such an um, Instagram had the. They brought stories over from from like Snapchat. I think Snapchat did it first. Uh, yeah. Do you remember Snapchat mm-hmm. had stories or I, did Instagram? Yeah, I think it was Snapchat. I think Snapchat yeah. had stories first, but Instagram took that over and. Um, and yeah, that's why I think that's a big reason why it's a really important app. It's like it's kind of my like go-to app. I find it's like it's a nice fundamental app. But like right now specifically, I'm really into TikTok. I think there's a lot of like interesting things you can do with it. Um, but I, that's that's kind of like an that's a, a different lane in social media. It's like that c- super quick stuff. It's kind of like Vine was, but it's a little different. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's like it was interesting you were saying about how it's important to to be active on Instagram because if you aren't uh, posting regularly and you're not using all aspects of of Instagram and lives too, lives are really important, then you literally are going to get bumped down the algorithm of Instagram. Like you're not going to be, your stuff's not going to get shown to as many people. When you say lives, can you you clear us up on that? Like an Instagram live. Oh, Um, similar like a Facebook. Like what we're doing now. Just like what we're doing now. Um, But just like, but Instagram is always a little more, it's it's like it's it's supposed to be a little it's usually more casual right you're supposed to just, it's supposed to be just you and your phone just like no mics and stuff like that like That's, sometimes people is that do, like a courtesy thing or is it an unwritten rule is it just like a cool thing or is well it it's it's hard it's literally hard to do it because you can't you can't log on to Instagram and do a live off your laptop so right. you have to do it off a, off a device yeah, like so a phone it's, 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 so yeah. if you want mics plugged in you're gonna need some kind of weird adapter yeah, no, yeah, to go with a yeah, lightning yeah. and stuff it's complicated yeah, yeah, I um, but yeah, it's uh, it's like Instagram is definitely my my main go to app, and I think it's it seems to be still like pretty much the prominent app uh, of our social media of, of all. I mean, Facebook's still huge, but it's starting to kind of take a different form, I think, than it once yeah, did. It's cool. interesting for me because I went through. I didn't have Instagram in high school. I just started to get Facebook in late high school for me. Um, so like I went through like like starting to have experience with social media in the sense of like MSM Messenger, ICQ yeah, yeah. and like MySpace and then going into like Facebook and then seeing Instagram and now like TikTok I'm like oh my gosh like I now I'm old like I don't even know what the yeah. heck they're doing on this. So I had to like spend some time to figure that out too. So what's the end game though? So is it to get people to a website to get people to YouTube, to get people to subscribe, to get people to buy? Like what's what's the end game? Definitely depends on what you're after. Like okay. it depends on if you're a musician, that's totally different than if you're building a business, right? Like there's, there's a, even though music is, like you're, you as an artist is a business, but it depends on what type of thing that sure. you're doing. Well, the like two of we you are doing music. We're going to talk to a mermaid soon. But yeah. right now we're talking about online music. Yeah. So that's what you want people to buy or buy into your music, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, we're always, I'm sure we're, we're always directing to like, like I want people to be, unless I'm talking about my own personal brand of like, like drumming or something or like trying to get gigs and stuff, which is a whole other thing. I'm directing people to streaming platforms. That's what I want you to be. Yeah. I want you to go and, and either buy or stream my song. Like, right on. That's what you want. So I'll give a shout out to our sponsors because they're helping us pay some bills here. Molson, Molson Cores, Good Channel stuff. Technologies, Monty's. E-Printed, Monty's. Um, so we're going to have a little, uh, little pop quiz here. I'm going to get each of you guys to do this. Oh, so I'll start with you, Matt. You're going to release a song. Mm-hmm. It's coming out in two days. Walk us through what you would do to start uh, start getting some some promo on that song. From from two days out. Yeah. Well. Okay. You, <laughs> two, let, weeks. Let, yeah. see, two weeks. Two weeks. See, trip me okay, up. Okay. You just got the you just got the master done. It's, it's in, in your, your hand. hand. What are you gonna hand. do? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I would want quite a bit of time. Some people are planning. Honestly, some people are planning like months, many months yeah. ahead of, ahead of time. You want to you want to get. I've learned that for sure. If you if you want to keep that train rolling, you want to be way ahead. You want to be already. <laughs> like working on the next thing when your other things like out right okay what's the okay well the sequence of events to get to get it to the public i mean yeah uh well you want to get once you've got your master and everything's done musically from the from it then you've got to build up like like your uh your press kit right for for that and you've got to sit down first thing is actually like what's your budget how much do you want to spend on this what you, what do you realistically want out of out of the release and then start going through the press kit and just make it like I always make we'll make an Excel sheet and we'll we'll have everything we need, um, whether it be, you know, promo videos and stuff or wh- whatever. We meaning just the two of you or you mean the, the team? Usually team, yeah. usually team, but depends on, you know, maybe you're like your photo guy is not going to pay you for the other things you're doing. Like that's just one of one of your members depends on how close you are. But usually, at least for the core of everything, it would be like for green, like, oh, it's me and Anthony. Right. Right. Um, 
but yeah, then you, you literally just go checking off those things and, and you want to get them done by a deadline. And it's really important to stick to that and get it done when, the way you want it to. Um, but yeah, it, it depends on what, what you want out of it, like how much money you want to spend. Because like, are you just trying to like get a little momentum or something? Like you're probably not going to go get a publisher if you if you are only trying to like, you know, put a song just to get a bit of buzz. Right. Right. Or to, like, go on, to get on the air. Yeah, yeah. If you want to like, and if you if you're going for radio, that's like a whole other thing. Sure. Like that's a whole other budget, right? You can't just like hope. No, no, no. <laughs> you can, but <laughs> you have a much better chance if you if you're going through maybe. No, but like you have to get like you're gonna get a publicist. Or something yeah, you're gonna like, want yeah, a publicist, yeah. and you're gonna ma probably radio tracker if yeah. you're not under a label. So I don't want to sound crass, but is is it paying off? I mean, if you're talking about paying all these people to do that, because back in our day, the whole goal, goal was to get a record deal, so they would pay for all this stuff. Yeah. And it still happens. It yeah. still happens. It definitely still happens. Yeah. And, and, and you open back eventually. Better than you. <laughs> true. True that. So, basically, I'm saying, so are you like, are you? Is it paying off for you? Is my question. Like, so are you getting enough streams and enough YouTube subscribers, enough hits that it's you can actually afford to do this? This is your full time gig, right? This is all you do. Yeah, yeah. It's uh. It's well, no, not not necessarily. Matt, it's, actually, let's talk about this for a second. Matt is college educated, so mm -hmm. what you're you're chosen, what you've studied, and what you've done as a profession. And this will blow people's minds. Talk about this for a second. My my. Uh, what what you've done for a, a day job when you've done it because it's, yeah, it's pretty impressive. I started uh, working a part time job just for for really extra money, but back when I was. Because most of my money would be coming from gigging, honestly. And, and even original artists, most of their money is coming from touring. Sure. Because from the shows, the money they're making, their merch sales, yep. Yep. all that stuff. You're going to make some decent money if you're huge off of streams and, you're and, the answer, though, and sales and stuff. But, this is actually very impressive. Yeah. But I, uh, yeah, I went to, yeah, I, went, I had an undergrad in, um, in geography, and then I went and did a postgrad in uh, GIS. So I did like computer stuff on the side. Um, so it must be it must be kind of handy now super handy yeah, <laughs> right i haven't yeah. played a show in many many months like yeah. i'd be screwed yeah but, uh, saying, but that's but that that a lot of your success online and all your yeah. online working and your algorithms that you're dealing with it a lot of this is stuff that you kind of know i'm sure yeah yeah it's uh i i would say like with success for like the your online stuff that i'm doing like I wouldn't necessarily translate it straight to like how much money that's generating, particularly because the second that you start going, where's my money now? Yeah, yeah. You, you already screwed yourself because you got to think big picture. Like, where yeah. are you going after? So I'd say as long as you're meeting your goals, like if you, you if you're meeting your short term goals, then that's your best bet to getting to that that end goal where you're going to be making the good money. Like write write right that on a sticky note and give it to Dave when your segment's <laughs> done, please. So, so uh, now so it's different genre, yeah. but I'm guessing the same sort of plan well yeah it's a similar thing um you know you, you have the master track and uh we usually we approach it a little bit differently um so we'll basically you and you know, you've paid for things right yeah and and that's the thing that uh i feel like a lot of artists uh don't really expect when they start to make music is that like it, it's pretty much like a it's almost like a pay to win thing a mm. pay to win like business it's and, investing. Um, it's really right investing, man. and like yeah. um like some people don't want to give up the money and like maybe they work hard but like that's not really going to get you anywhere if you have like five people listening like you can only get so many of your friends to listen to it before that's all the people that are going to listen so um we usually like you know we'll we'll do a similar thing like set a budget for ourselves and figure out uh like you know where we want to allocate that money and um, get the most return exactly yeah mm -hmm. and not necessarily like money but just like streams and like at mm -hmm. the end of the day like Unless the song goes viral, you're probably not going to make all the money back oh, that you yeah. put into one song. Uh, you'll probably lose more than in most cases, which um, which is fine, especially if you're still getting like plays and stuff. But um, so we'll usually get the master, and then uh, the next thing we do is we kind of like we have one guy who does our cover. He lives in uh, Cape Breton, and uh, we kind of like we'll send him the song because like he's really creative okay so we'll send them the song and basically say like we're open to interpretation so like if whatever you want to make the cover art like what you think would be cool for the song like go for it and, and then he takes that and sends it back and um, then we upload it to our distributor or whatever and then once it's up then um, we put the pre-save link in our bio start like posting about it like on um, on Twitter um, Instagram um, 
since uh, since TikTok started to become big, like we started using that platform as well, just like you know, posting like a 15 second snippet of the song right and, and uh, that sort of thing. So you've, and um, once it's out, like it's, I feel like some artists like once the song's out, they think that's the end. Like mm. it's out, you, the work's done. But like yeah. it, honestly, like you, once the song's out, you have to work harder than sure. f- before it's out. Well, like I said, I mean, that's it earlier. Once that song's out, you have another one in, in the in the kitty ready to go again. Yeah. And you're doing 40, 50 songs in a, in a setting. That that's that's super impressive. I mean, there's a lot of words. There's a lot of things to do in that. I mean, and the technology that I mean, how did you how did you learn all this stuff, Zach? Uh, well, honestly, like I me, just, no. I'm just <laughs> Actually, Zach, how do I do this? <laughs> it's usually resetting the uh, the microwave clock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but honestly, like, the biggest thing that I did was, uh, like, it's, like, super boring and it's super tedious, but I spent, like, countless hours basically on, on YouTube looking at tutorial videos. It pretty much felt like I was in school, but well, it was, like, really. worth it for me because, like, when you go to school, obviously, you don't want to be there, but at the end of the day, like, it's eventually it's going to pay off for you at some yeah, yeah. point. It's the same thing with, YouTube like, YouTube you know, is the best free education you can get. Yeah. Yeah. It well, really it's interesting yeah, you're really saying really that because I've, I've seen you do that. Yep. Every time we're around Jordan, if he doesn't understand something, right on YouTube. Yep. So, yep. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's interesting how, um, again, people think music and musicians, and we're just a bunch of dummies that just go, and there's a lot of uh, intellectual property and a lot of intellectual people that are figuring this stuff out. A lot of study out. time. Right. So, sorry, sorry to interrupt you, so keep, continue. Um, tutorials. Yeah, just uh, lots of YouTube tutorials, and... Um, you know, every song's different and every person's voice is different. So, like, I had, like, because I'm very picky with how my music sounds, I didn't want to go and pay somebody to engineer a song for me or, like, mix a song for yep. me and master a song for me. So I, that's where I started to learn the engineering side, too, because I was, like, tired of my song sounding like crap, you know? Like, yeah. And um, because I'm very picky, I did that. And um, I, I was making beats for a little bit, but... Um, it was taking more time out of actually making the song because again being very picky like if it wasn't sounding good then i'd have to start from scratch and so i found i actually reached out to a few youtube producers i had found um just through searching for beats on there and like reach out to them and anytime i need beats like they'll send an email and, and they'll uh, send a beat pack uh would you two like be alone <laughs> He's whispering through nothing to my somebody's ear. phone. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> I promise it's yours. Well, and it's so here's what I'm hearing. Um, back in the day, when you were talking about you would pay, and if you make the money back, whatever. So the way it used to be was you would get signed, you get an advance. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you get money to, you know, pay your rent, buy your gear, whatever. Record your songs and write. Record your songs and write. And then you go out in the road and play a whole bunch of good venues and crappy venues and the idea was maybe the record company gets their money back and if they right. don't they'll put more money into you but you get to do it again so you guys are basically doing a version of that but you're doing it on your own right yeah we're we're, we're like you know you're bankrolling artists. yourself yeah it's like it's like any any business you know you're not gonna start your business even if you're just selling something you're, you're gonna not expect to make money right right away make your money back right away like you have to invest a bunch of money and uh and like i said just keep achieving your short-term goals to get to that that end game you can't be thinking like oh, i need everything back right away because then then it won't work but um but like you were saying there's still that still is happening you know there's still labels and and big artists that are that are doing exactly that mm-hmm. um it's just that you know we're we're not signed to a major label or anything like that so we have to do it on our own and i'm sure like even then at some point before you got to that point um you still had to like invest some. You have to invest money in gear, you know. Especially sure. When, and there were stories to rock band or something. You need a ton of gear that's, that's right. super expensive. Just like now, if you're like a hip hop artist, well, you better have like a three thousand dollar MacBook. Yeah. Yep. Like, and I mean, and endorsements like, don't really exist anymore. You kind of get stuff, but you kind of. Yeah. But the the thing is too, back in the day, there were so many bands that broke up because they were smart enough with lawyers to figure out that if you broke the band up, you didn't have to pay the money back, right? Yeah. So I mean, yeah. a lot of good bands just flew by the wayside because they never made back that initial investment mm-hmm. yeah but so, to that point there's no more record companies either like there was but that was really just a big loan shark that's really what it was and, and at the end of the day it looked good and some folks who made it really big made it really big but some of them i mean you hear stories about bands like boston so many other bands that had great talent great songs heart was another one that just had so many problems with labels 
that they almost had to break up or had to sue to get out yeah. of that deal, right? I mean, that still happens. Like yeah. nowadays, like like labels screw artists over and stuff and like but again that's like on also sometimes on the artist because when it comes to labels like you have to be smart enough to read your contract when, yes. before you sign it and like even like you know hiring a lawyer is like a smart thing to do before signing like a record deal because you know you got to read the fine print because you know it's all well and good if you just read the bottom and look, oh look at all the money i'm going to get but at the end of the day like they own your masters they own all your music so mm. they basically call the shots for you yeah. So in your world, you guys basically—I mean, it's both of you now. Um, are you? Have you? Are, are you like? Are you guys the, the guys that sit down and sign contract guys? Are you guys basically the guys out there figuring out how to spend your money smartly and how to stream your stuff and with the platforming work? Is that how it works? Because I would seem to me like it's a long, tough road, and but it seems like financially, it's uh, it's probably a little more safe. Like you know, what I mean, like you know, you can, you may not make any money, but it seems like you know to do that kind of thing. Like it's it's a little here, it's a little there. It's not like somebody just. You know, it's not like you just chunk down a big chunk of cash and either, you know, sink or swim. Like, do you find, like, now you can kind of, like, pick away at it sort of thing? Is that kind of how it works? And it gets easier as you get smarter and as you get more traction? Or Well, I mean, if, like, someone popped a big old contract in front of Absolutely, my face, but that, I, but I'd the, entertain it. <laughs> no, I, I, exactly. So but in case saying, you have a record but, but, company watching by yeah, the yeah, today. Yeah. But we're talking about organic. Like like, we're talking about <laughs> organics. We're talking about, you know... Uh, you know, like stream platforms and Spotify yeah, yeah, and all yeah, that. Like, yeah. it doesn't cost a lot to get into that. It's just no. it's how smartly you can do it, I suppose, right? Yeah, definitely. And it's like, it's going to take, at More some work. point, it's going to take some money, whether it's literally putting money into the social medias or, or, or paying for promotions. But, or even if it's just if you have a really great gimmick or a, great, a really great piece of content, you're going to spend money on gear or yeah. stuff for that thing just like you've spent a bunch of money on this stuff to do right. this live like that's right that's just how that works um but yeah like like i said if there's if you there's can do it on, but you can do it it's homespun like and it's still easier to, it's easier to do it on your own now it's definitely yeah, way yeah, easier so, I think I so it's like it. it's not gonna hurt <laughs> to start no. to, to start to do that but if you ever wanted to get picked up by someone really big if you want to get a major label or something to pay attention to or any label yeah. Um, I mean, they're not just gonna like show up at your door because you put one song out and like no. made a post on Instagram. Like, you got to do a lot of stuff to get somebody's attention. That's right. And it was, al I'm pretty sure it was always yeah. like that. I mean, like, if you weren't doing much and you were barely playing and you weren't that good, then no one really was gonna yeah. care that much about you. Yeah, that's true. You know, it's right. like when you think about the picture. Like, you think about back in the old days. You know, you get these one-hit wonders and you get all these people. Like, so it was so hard to get noticed and like. You know, you get to get to the studio, and then they go, "Geez, anybody can do it now. Everybody's got a studio. Everybody's got a studio." But then, but that's the thing. Now that's you're, hard, but now though. you're one in a billion instead yeah, of one in a million. I literally said that million. just yeah. before we started. I was like, I was saying how it's like there's so much more opportunity, but that means that everybody gets that's right. more opportunity. That's right. Yeah, that's right. So everybody gets. Yeah, it's right. And and the along right going with that, uh, like technology is also advancing. So sure. like. The microphones are getting better and stuff, and produ production's and getting cheaper, more. Yeah, yeah but everybody cheaper. has their hands on it. Well, you know, it, it. it's a good point because our little old thing, and I mean, you guys are part of it. But our little old thing used to be a pretty cool club that you know you had to you had to do some time and you had to get good at what you did. And That's right. um, you know, Dave and I had the uncanny knack when we first went out. We get fired at every bar <laughs> we played at. That's a true story. But we kept going. We kept going. We kept going. Yeah. And um, but you know, we're all part of a cool club. But now it just seems like anybody can like. You know, and I use tattoos as an example. They used to mean something back in the day, and now you see kids that get sleeves. Yeah. yeah. That it's it's not the same thing, and I'm not dissing anybody that has that, but it's just that the one thing for me that's kind of gone a little bit is that cool. You know, do the work and you get to be part of the club is kind of like not quite as what it used to be. That's just the way I see it. It's anyway. almost like it's expected. Yeah. Just, like, uh, right. it's well, that. yesterday's one hit wonders, today's viral video. You know what I mean? So that's probably if, if we're going to put that's it in, into terms. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But I mean, like that's why you guys keep putting the content up because if you get that one viral video, then you can hit payday. Is that fair to say? I mean, like if you get definitely, that's like one of the big. Well, yeah, to some extent, maybe not payday, but definitely like can make a huge advancement in your in your career well the dude on the skateboard right. with Exposure. the ocean spray bottle yeah like, he got a car from ocean that spray dude's got a house and he, now and he and got everything. he bought a house for for, for yeah. his family right. you know right. one one seven second or 15 seconds the guy who fed I, raccoons got I, a free i want to know what the, the guy feeding the raccoons got. and that yeah. to me is <laughs> i bet fleetwood mac got paid for that too man. right that's, that's right. why they were super excited and that's what, hey <laughs> we we don't have a problem with the guys raccoons because that is very cool yep yeah. and what it speaks to is the fact and i'll say this Somebody actually goes out there and does it yep. and convinces a whole lot of other people to look at it. So 
who's the winner, the guy that does it or the guy that convinces the people to do it? And I say it's him, right? So I see it's the you. raccoons. They're well fed. <laughs> well, yeah, and then, yeah and they're, they're actually very well fed and they're well, where we will behave. So, um, so I think we're getting close. We got to yeah. we got to wrap this yes. segment. I what I want to do, what I want to do, I want to thank our sponsors again, uh, Molson Cores. Uh, e print it. Monty's. Monty's. Uh, Channel, Channel Tech. Technologies. Yeah, yeah. What I want you guys to each do for me, because yeah. um, you get a lot on the go. So let us know. Here's your PSA. Here's your time to shine, Maddie. You tell everybody where they can find you, what you're doing, and what's up. Cool. Yeah, I'm super into TikTok right now. So that's like that's that's my main thing. I'm excited about. So that's at Matt Music M E U S I C. And then uh, yeah. And then uh, uh, the same on Instagram. Also, uh, just for only drum content is at Matt Muse Drums. Same on Facebook. Um, and Matt's got some very cool drum stuff on there. I'm he doing a lot, a lot of lot drum of stuff. Time. Like since since uh, since uh, COVID stuff, I've been pretty hard on like drum content. Lots of videos, uh, and I'm pretty excited about that stuff. I've got a lot of things coming up. Um, that's that I'm going to be announcing soon. So um, yeah, that's the main thing. And then at Green Light Go. Uh, on everything, it's all green like oak, uh, green like oak music um, on yeah. Instagram. Yeah, and uh, and shout out Anthony McMullen there too. And uh, beautiful again. young man. Thanks again for having me. Also, Thank you. Right Thank you man. So, what about you? Let me know where I can find you, but where can they find you? Uh, at uh, Prod ZTF, P R O D ZTF on literally every platform: Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, all those. Uh, Twitter, I'm pretty funny on. So if you wanna. <laughs> have a couple last go on there. <laughs> Same on TikTok. Um, I'm actually planning on dropping a project uh, in late April, so we're starting to uh, put that together now. Got all the masters done. We're just working on uh, promotion for that, so uh, that'll be uh, coming in late April. Awesome. Man. I'm sorry your father keeps interrupting you. He does it all the time. I can't make him stop. <laughs> anyway, it's not as bad as Dave interrupting you. It's, uh, it's hard work, boys. You guys, you guys put the time in. You well, guys, and, and you know, they didn't disappoint. You know, I mean, no. you know, um, I get to, well, I'm around both of them. I mean, I, I'm around Matt. Well, not as much as the last, well, last year. We were, it seemed like every other weekend we were playing somewhere. And I see these guys, you know, quite a bit. But um, they do work hard. They do know what's going on. I, I talk to both of them, you know, I wouldn't say super regular, but... I, I do know what they're doing, and it's again for our audience who anybody that and and Stephanie coming up in the next segment. I mean, anybody that wants to, you can't poke at it with a stick. I guess no. is the uh, they did. They're doing no. the work. That's fair to say. Right, yeah. Yeah. and it's it it isn't just what I mean. Reality TV, I think, gave people this impression that you know yeah. you can sit there and I don't know pick your nose and yep. have a have a TV show, right? And that's you know there's work that goes into it. You got to convince people to buy into it. You got to convince people to put money into it. You're really and, good at picking your nose. Well, That's right, you know. yeah, <laughs> Dave, you're awesome at that. So I don't know what that. So anyway, so that by that point, guys, thanks so much for being here. Um, I know that everybody that's watching has got a lot out of it. Um, and you know, go check what these guys are doing. And if you want some advice, you want some tips or whatever, I'm sure you guys would be uh, happy to help you guys out. Are approachable. Well. Yeah, oh, yeah. definitely. Yeah, always for, always for a fee. <laughs> always, always, always hit, hit me up for sure. I'm sure it's the same for you. Yeah, I'm no, always definitely. down. I heard Zach was coin operated. Is that not true? I heard that story once before. Coin operated. Is that not a phrase that goes along with Zach? He, he had a sh I actually, but <laughs> both these guys had like they were flipping sneakers and stuff. We can't talk about that right now. Well, that's just <laughs> yeah. another show. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for being here. Um, the bullpen, and uh, we'll be back for our next segment coming up. Good job. Right on, cool. Peace, thanks, out. boys. Thanks so much. All right. Right on. So I'm Sean. And I'm Dave. And I'm Maurice. We have another special guest. This is segment two. This is the first time we've had two segments on the bullpen. Get used to Unbelievable. it. Unbelievable. It could be three. I mean, I'm, I see a full band over here. I yeah, see yeah. Uh, Chris Farley coming down and lifting people up. And, <laughs> um, you know, three sec or three minutes of him not being able Socially to catch his distance, breath. Socially distance, of course. Absolutely. Let's talk um, about our sponsors. Should we start there, maybe? We should. So uh, Molson Coors. Um, They've been sponsoring a lot of stuff that Barstools has been doing. Uh, Brennan Childerly and oh look at that! <laughs> we didn't even rehearse that, so that's what's cool about that. Molson Coors, E Print It, Channel Technologies, Monty's. Um, yeah, he's gonna ask. He's gonna ask for fifteen of it back though. Um, so Monty's uh, again this Saturday night, March thirteenth. Maximum Overdrive. If yep. anybody has loved the eighties, and we talked in the last segment about networking back when. Yeah. 
Metallica and all those thrash guys, the way they got big was they used to, everybody used to exchange cassette tapes. They would record their stuff and they would exchange the tapes, and that's how they did their following. So it's, it's interesting that, um, you know, now it's kind of a version of that. Uh, it took yeah. Lars, you know, breaking up Napster to make, make it happen. But yeah. anyway, so well, we're going to get you to introduce this lovely young, young lady yes. here. Well, I'll tell you, I, I've known you since probably... Uh, like 14 years You were years just now. barely, I think you were just, just bar age, I think. You yeah. were just ready to go into the bars. <laughs> and uh, it started off at an open mic and... We're going to find out that from the first ha segment to this segment, it's going to the, the same equation is that you're fearless, but you've worked hard. As long as I've ever known you, you just always got an iron in the fire. You're always ahead of the curve. You're always doing something. Now, guys, I, she's a book publisher. Okay. She's a songwriter. <laughs> she's a singer. I think you've even spent some time in a band. Yeah. <laughs> you've done all of that. Uh, you went to school. You, you've done, you went to college uh, studying about, like, uh, for looking, what was it, what, how, uh, for... When you're, uh, I got two degrees. Two degrees. <laughs> uh, and I barely then, get off my own couch. Then, Good and, lord. And then, and then, and then, somehow along the way, you became a mermaid. I mean, yeah. like it's a one. And, and, and two Seems books. like a natural progression to me. Two books. Two books. You published two books. Yeah. So who is she, Mo? She's Stephanie Reina. Reina, yeah. 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 And so, I guess the whole the idea of this segment, as you got from the first part, is. Everybody had to pivot in the last year, yeah. and and pivot we've all been trying to do. And some people are doing a better job than others, and we're struggling. We're figuring it out, and yep. having you guys on uh, showing us because we're just a bunch of old people reminiscing about how it used to be. <laughs> Not well, old. You, stop it now, Marie. Yeah, come on, now. <laughs> but but you know, oldly slant to that end of the table, you know, boys. Sorry, I'm not jumping on that, but anyway. But, but seriously, you were you were ahead of this curve. Like like you say, we're we're late to the dance. I mean, you've been on YouTube. You've been doing that all this stuff. You were doing this long before we had to do it. And the first thing when we started talking about this, this, this doing this show, I, the first thing I thought it was you, you know, uh, because as long as I've known you, you've always been the one that, well, see what she's doing, and then you'll see what other mm -hmm. people yeah. do. Yeah. So the online thing, when did you start uh, doing the on, uh, focusing online? Yeah, so Mo and I met through music, and I used to do music a lot, but then when the mermaid thing that I started took off, it kind of took over my entire life. <laughs> so unfortunately, my guitar does not get the love it used to. <laughs> um, but just like the guys were just saying before me, like the formula is very, very much the same. It's a lot of multiple income streams, having to be present, being out there, networking. Um, the guys were talking a lot about collaboration, mm. and that's a really big thing too. I'm huge in collaboration. I try not to see people as um, competitors. I'd rather employ my competitors. <laughs> yeah, I love that. That's the I village. That's that. the village. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Look at you right on the mic, Steph. You can come a little closer. Yeah, yeah. and that works, that works a lot better for me, employing my competitors. My, my best friend and my head mermaid that works for me, um, Rebecca Mermaid Mimi, um, we met on Kijiji when we posted competing ads. And I reached out to her and said, ah, oh, you know, like, you seem nice. And we're doing the same thing. Let's, like, have coffee or something and get to know each other now we have this we've been in a movie together we have this traveling um, aquarium tank show that we do That's cool. we've done music videos yeah like so i love that because dave was moving last summer and he bought a lot of furniture on Kijiji, and all he did was beat people down on the price. He didn't have coffee with them or try to collaborate <laughs> at all. So uh, there's a tip right there. Hmm. Yeah, but I didn't want to employ them. Anyway, so uh, so I, I love that line. Speak a little bit more. Employ your competitors. Yeah, yeah. It's really worked well for me. Um, what I'm doing is really huge in the States, and it's huge in like warmer places. And even though I've been doing it 13 years, it's still just catching on in Canada. We're just It's just starting to get big. People look at what I do, and they say, well, can you walk? Because <laughs> I don't know that kind of defeats the purpose of being a mermaid. So for people who don't know, I own Halifax Mermaids. We have a troupe of 14 performers um, that perform in these big, realistic special effects costumes. We do movies, music video. We have contracts with the city, so we do all the big events like Canada Day, right. um, Natal Day, stuff like that. We have a tank. Um, I perform in the oh, aquarium sure. at Dalhousie University. We got pictures to show you the tank here. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> hang on. Watch this, folks. Watch this. Watch this. I'm gonna find it right now. <laughs> nope, that's not the tank. One here is the tank. Well, one. I have a little bit of experience with your whole mermaid thing now. <laughs> like, my daughter. That. Like that's pretty cool. Yep. 
<laughs> my daughter, she's 15 now, but when she was eight years old, wanted to be a mermaid. Oh, this was it. Yeah. So it, I'm into this thing for about 500 bucks. This outfit and this yep. fin and stuff. Now, the thing is, so you have to be a very talented athlete. You had to be a great swimmer in so, order to... Yeah, I didn't start off as a great swimmer. Actually, oh. what inspired me to get into it is I was actually... Um, it, it, it actually transitioned me out of music because I got extremely sick and I got diagnosed with a disorder and I was having trouble playing guitar um, mm. because of my hands and I was really, really depressed. So it was easier to be a mermaid. No, it wasn't <laughs> easier. <laughs> um, I, I just, I started losing a lot of my mobility and like feeling really down about myself. Mm. Um, I would go to open mics and stuff and get them to play for me and I'd sing instead. And even my singing, I started losing a lot of my vocal control, which just made me depressed because it's like, yeah. I could do this and I could do it well, so why can't I do what I used to do even though I'm practicing? Like a really big head trip, right? So, and that was my outlet, like music was my outlet. I, I wrote songs, I played with bands, I did stuff, and all of a sudden I didn't have my creative outlet anymore. And I was feeling real sad about myself, sitting in bed one day, watching TV, and that movie from the 80s came on. It's actually the 37th anniversary of it today. Splash. Um, Splash. Yes. <laughs> so that, what, we, 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 that's where we had John. That's the right. Virus. You totally knew that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, Tom Hanks, Joe Hannah. And I remember watching that and thinking, geez, that's not CGI. Like, how did she do that in that costume? That's so cool. And I started researching it, and I, I discovered this woman um, who I've actually got tattooed on my arm here, um, Annette Kellerman. She was like the first professional underwater performer a hundred years ago, and she had the wow. same illness I had. And oh, wow. um, she invented the modern day bathing suit and then was arrested for wearing it. Um, she did like the first movie that cost a million dollars to make. So they made a movie about her called Million Dollar Mermaid, and she wrote the first fitness book to ever be written. Um, and she was just like constantly breaking barriers and boundaries a hundred years ago. So I thought, man, if this woman could do this a hundred years ago, I, I need to be able to do something like this now. With the same, yeah, we, we, not, we have to make, not make the same excuses. You have the same, uh, yeah. you know, conditions and stuff. Yeah, 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 it's really crazy. And um, so she's famous for that Marilyn Monroe style bathing suit. Okay. That's like really popular. She got arrested for wearing it. You weren't allowed to show your legs back then. Right, right. <laughs> and she was doing like these Olympic level diving things and stuff. And she made the mermaid tails. She was swimming in tanks with crocodiles. And So did she invent the monotail as well? Yeah, the so she, fin, like, she guess? invented. Yeah this this whole thing she invented synchronized swimming like it's crazy so I'm learning about her and I'm like man I would just like to swim like that um, no concept of a business nothing I was just wanted to use it as motivation sure so started doing physiotherapy started taking lessons for swimming and stuff um, eventually went on and got free diving certified which taught me how to hold my breath for three minutes underwater mm -hmm. and how to be safe underwater and I started going to the gym, got a personal trainer, and so it didn't come naturally to me. Some people can put on a costume and they're amazing. Right. Um, I had to really work at it. It wasn't well, easy. We have pictures we'll show in a little while. If you're like you're, you're 20 feet underwater. Yeah. I mean, you, and you relax down there. You don't look like you're you're, you're panicking or anything. Yeah. You look totally relaxed down there. I mean, you're a mermaid. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We make it look easy, but so do rock stars, right? Like <laughs> it's a lot of polish. Well, it's a Mo, lot of Mo work. and I anyway. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So I got we'll into this, friends. and right from the beginning, I had to rely on the online world because I was the first one really doing it in Canada. Nobody was doing it. I couldn't learn from anybody else. Right. Um, I had to network with people on Facebook, on forums, and um, then Instagram and Twitter and stuff started popping up and everything. And so I just started out by doing kind of um, little volunteer things. I had kind of a crappy costume, and I would volunteer for, like, kids' charities and stuff. But it started to catch on, and this whole time I'm doing my degrees, and it's getting bigger and bigger. My professors are saying, you know, you should really do something with that. Right. And I'm like, oh, I didn't go to school and get two degrees to be a mermaid. <laughs> <laughs> so it was just, it was a hobby at the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I, you know, um, I turned it into a part-time job in the summer. And I would save up and get progressively better costumes, better look, uh, underwater makeup, stuff like that. Oh, right. And um, I could charge a bit more and keep going and keep going. And uh, you know now I charge 275 an hour. And um, we go out and we do all these different events. We have a team of 14. It's crazy. Um, my I've been viral so many times. I got to be um, a clip of me was featured on the Colbert Show, which was oh, really wow. cool. Yeah. <laughs> and he uh, a friend of ours, uh, uh, John Mulane. You're in one of his yeah, videos. Yeah, I was in yeah. John Mulane's videos. Um, I I got to live a dream and do a video with Heather Rankin, who was a huge yes, inspiration to me growing right. up. So my sister and I, Heather, really wanted to do this underwater video, and she can't swim. <laughs> okay. So, so my 
sister and I are trying to take poor Heather Rakin, and I'm looking at her going, okay, listen, we can't let Heather die. She can't <laughs> drown. Our parents will kill us. <laughs> are you, so are you from, where are you from, Cape Breton? No, I'm from Halifax. Okay. I just, I grew up singing choir, doing right. Irish dancing, stuff okay. like that. So the Rankins were huge sure. to yep. me, right? Yep. Um, I used to sing all their songs in choir. So it would been a real jag if you killed one of them off. Yeah, yeah I get exactly. it. Well, yeah. So, so I have a question for you, and, and you know, Outside of the business, which is amazing. Yeah. Um, you know, you're sitting there, and basically the thing that you love the most is kind of taken away from you. So you could have just kind of said, that's it. Yeah. You went another way. So, I mean, there's a great message there. Yeah. Don't take no for an answer. That's right. But from that time till now, what was the timeline? Oh, it's been 13 years. Okay, which yeah. sounds like a lot, but it probably has flown yeah, I'm, by. I'm 35, and so I was like in my 20s, okay. right? Yeah, and it was hard. It's hard being in your 20s and having health issues. People... It's like people just don't expect that, and uh, you look okay, so they don't expect you to be sick. Um, so yeah, it was a long time, and I'm doing these two degrees, and I'm building this up. Um, and then um, it started becoming a full-time business in 2012 because I graduated uh, to be a teacher, and we had way too many teachers at that point. Right. And the school board kind of put their foot down and said, like, no more teachers. It was also like the transit strike. Mm -hmm. um, all kinds of bad stuff going on. And I couldn't get any work. Um, I was running a musical at a school, volunteer. And the school wanted to hire me as their music teacher because their music teacher had to take leave. But the school board wouldn't let them do it because of all this red tape. So I just couldn't get in. I couldn't do anything. So I thought, well, I've got nothing else but the mermaid stuff. So I'm going to just try it and do it full time and see what happens. And it, it, it got crazy. <laughs> That's awesome, though. Um, but see, so you were a creative person, and you, know, you needed to get it out. You couldn't do music anymore, yeah. so you found another way. And that sounds like your spirit. You're a very pioneering spirit. Yeah, well, one of the big things that helped us is in 2015, we won a $10,000 grant. Nice. Um, and there's a lot of great grants out there for musicians and artists. It's a, it's a process to apply for a grant. It's exhausting. Sometimes you can hire people to do it for you. How much um, do you charge? <laughs> <laughs> for grant writing, yeah. yeah. Um, so that was really amazing it gave us a big boost we were able to buy a lot of stuff um but i mean and you're close when it comes to the when you say the music the music business and what you're doing is is so is so closely related i mean you even cross paths like for example i i you probably would have talked about it but uh like your tails and some of your costumes, are you Lady Gaga's costume yeah, people. Yeah, I have, I have, yes. I've worked with Lady Gaga's costume people. Um, I met the special effects artist who made the tail for Splash. He also it's all show business. He won an Oscar for ET, and he's a personal friend of mine. Wow. <laughs> um, I met the animators from The Little Mermaid. Oh. My friends with them. <laughs> It's really cool, and I get to go on tour as well. I get hired, um, not during COVID, obviously, but I've been hired to go to other countries and provinces and states um, just to talk about how I did this. Um, I published some books about how I kind of built this up from nothing and, and teaching other people how they can get work in the arts um, and become self-sufficient like I have. Um, you got a beer coming. Oh, look at that. <laughs> nice. Um, so that's... <laughs> Here's an interesting thing. So a parallel to what, what we've been doing the last year. So you mentioned, you know, you have some friends in high places. One of our first ones, we uh, a friend of ours said, hey, you should get, uh, it was Todd Zuckerman, the drummer from Styx. He just made a comment. Bruce Nelson, that actually is part owner of this bar, sent Todd an email. Next thing you know, he's on our show. That's awesome. The, and then we had, you know, Liberty DeVito and all kinds of that, that The point the role, is, is yeah. these are cool people, and you're going to tell me the same thing. They're, they're down to earth. Yeah, they're famous. Yeah, they do some really cool things, but they are, you meet them and they're awesome. Is that a fair yeah, statement? Yeah, yeah. You guys remember that? What, what's the Pink Floyd cover where Buddy's on fire and stuff? Like, my friend from, um, the, from Splash took me to where that photo was shot on the Warner Brothers lot. Nice. <laughs> oh, wow. So my husband, who's a huge Pink Floyd yeah. fan, was like, oh my God. So it's been really cool. And um, my team actually worked on Lighthouse, which was an Oscar winning film that just came out. Yes. Um, yep. We had a documentary filmed about us. I just did a TV show. And uh, right before COVID, we had a, a lot of interest in a reality TV show that was more like. Um, like a documentary series, Maritime Mermaids, following, okay. following us around the Maritime provinces. Um, so the thing for me now, now is that I'm 35 and I'm actually sitting here pregnant. <laughs> oh, congratulations. you got 13 other mermaids that can't pick up yes. the weight. Yeah. <laughs> so now I'm You have the littlest of, mermaids. And they're the littlest yeah. mermaids oh, on this way. Wow, yeah. Exactly. So, uh, 
Man. We're both Aquarius. Yeah, you, you're wondering why I sit down at the end Scorpio. of the table by myself, oh. right? <laughs> well, because of my health issues, we never thought this was yeah. possible. So it kind of took us by surprise and a bit of a little miracle here. Um, so I'm trying to do more of the management side of things. Sure. Right. Um, but I mean, I'm still in there. I'm still training. I'm still in the water. I'm but this is your gig. This is your full time gig. This is what you do. So it was until just a few years ago. Um, my mother-in-law uh, was very sick with Alzheimer's mm -hmm. and we became her uh, full-time caregivers so I needed a bit more flexibility so I did um, go get a big person job so <laughs> <laughs> here's, here's where it gets really weird because my my they I still I don't like to call it my side hustle because yeah. what, what did they say like uh, Entrepreneurs are the only people who will work 80 hours to avoid working 40 hours. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Oh, yeah. oh yes, yeah. indeed. So I work 80 hours, basically, so yeah. I don't like to call either of them my side that's hustle, right. right? So I'm a mermaid, and then on the other side, I actually train pilots in search and rescue. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that makes sense now. Oh, no, she, are you, man, you are just so busy. You're just yeah. so busy. You never saw that one coming. Well, so talk about that for a second. Like, yeah, what does that yeah. entail? Yeah. That's, that's very interesting. Yeah, so I'm really big into... Um, uh, virtual reality and simulation technologies. So I do all the coursewares um, that the pilots have to take. There's a new aircraft that Canada just got um, called the uh, Fixed Wing SAR, and I think it's just been called the Kingfisher. So they've been brought into the digital age with all their scanners and stuff like that. And so all these pilots need to be upgraded in their wow. education. So I write all the courses for that, all their assessment, and then we integrate the virtual reality training because when you can do the virtual reality training, you don't have to like decommission an aircraft. Mm -hmm every single time you need to train somebody on something. So uh, I actually, it's crossed over with my mermaid world in hilarious ways as well. Did you um, see a real mermaid <laughs> up in the air? <laughs> no, no um, so one of the uh, simulators I worked on um, is, a, is a hoist. So you're, you're, you're in the machine, you've got the goggles on, and it feels like you're in a helicopter and you're lowering the basket down to rescue somebody. And then I was hired for a film uh, two years ago, Welcome Alain Wasalan, which was about um, a refugee family who comes to Canada and the daughter meets a mermaid and they, they be become friends. Okay. And in order for them to lower me into this ginormous pool, um, I had to go to Survival Systems Training Inc., which is where right. they train the, uh, the helicopters that have submerged. Up in Woodside. Yeah, and then they put me in the basket, in the hoist basket, in the costume <laughs> to lower me down to the water. Well, that's kind of a nice Nice little segue to this because uh, I suppose too uh, where you're very very busy and this takes up a lot of your time and I'm, and Sean's a wonder, wonderful man or your husband and uh, and but he's also a big part of your company too like he's actually yeah you know he like you say a mermaid can't walk so I call him the mer wrangler yeah <laughs> so does everybody that does the mermaid thing do they have like a a, 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 a keeper that goes with them like does it, does it, no but seriously you just can't go do a gig by yourself you need yeah, someone to, yeah. to, to, to so, wrestle you around uh, we all take turns being mer wranglers and sometimes I will hire people's partners and stuff and uh, you don't have to be a man to be a mer wrangler like okay. we have uh, we have different ways of moving people around using wheelchairs using dollies things like that uh, but you do need like a safety spotter somebody who's sure. watching you the whole time one is of the there special training that you yeah, kinda, yeah yeah so one of the risks involved with what we do is an underwater blackout yep. so mm. you can just faint underwater without any warning which actually i had happened to me once in the aquarium i got too cold um, but I was being filmed for TV, so I was uh, had the adrenaline, right? right? So I'm going down, I'm doing my tricks, I'm coming up, and I'm hyperventilating without realizing it. And so I come up, and I'm supposed to give my safety spotter the OK signal, and my OK signal kind of went like this. Yeah. <laughs> and then I started going down, and they were right in the water pulling me out right so that I didn't drown, well, right? You yeah. get down there pretty, look, I mean, there's a couple pictures here of you. I mean, like, you're, you're way, way down there. I mean, like... Uh, like, well, that one there, like, you can see how far the water is. And like, they're cheering you on back there, about, too. <laughs> you're probably about 15 feet underwater in that picture yeah, there. Yeah, it's, uh, it's hard on the ears, like, trying to equalize the ears. I do stuff in the ocean, too. I've gotten to swim with sharks. Uh, I swam with manatees. I got a nice manatee tattoo mm. here. Big on the tattoos. There's my Daryl Hannah from Splash. <laughs> <laughs> we went on had uh, Lady Gaga's oh, costume designer doing Sean. that meat dress in the, you know, <laughs> underwater for the mermaid. That would yeah, not be good. Yeah, and uh, the person who made my costumes made one for Lady Gaga. And 
and then I've got um, there's a woman who makes these foil pieces that she wears on her face and I've got those too from her really cool stuff but it's funny how it crosses over with the with the music world but um, the thing that's the same between me and the guys that you just had up is definitely like uh, utilizing that social media so I wanted to tell you guys a little bit about Patreon because yes. that's something that a lot of musicians are getting yes. into now yes. um, Christina Martin is one of my favorite uh, local musicians I've been following her for years and she's really big on Patreon so Patreon is like a subscription service where people can decide how much they want to pay. You can pay two bucks a month or you can pay a hundred bucks a month. It's, it's up to you. Okay. And then the artist running it sets different reward tiers based on, okay, if you pay two bucks, you get early access to all my pictures and videos. If you pay uh, 10 bucks, I'm going to give you a shirt every quarter, like right every on. quarter year kind of thing. So I do this, and um, you can go right up to a hundred bucks. And if you pay a hundred bucks a month, I'll do an hour of mentoring with you for wow. your for your artistic business. Um, musicians do song like exclusive songwriting circles, or they do critiquing or collaborations and stuff. Um, exclusive videos, exclusive live chats, stuff like that. Ron so, Keel had that, right? Ron Keel. Yeah. yeah so uh, we had a gentleman on the show who I grew up listening to uh, by the name of Ron Keel. He's from uh, from the states, and <laughs> the only guy that can pitch better than Maurice O'Coin <laughs> is Ron Keel. Um, and you don't feel like you're being pitched, but he, he was talking about this this platform, and um, I went on and I looked at it, and that's exactly what yeah. he's doing. Yeah. And, and people really yeah. seem to like it because they don't feel like they're forced to pay a set amount. Yeah, um, they can and get you can in where they it. And they feel, well, get in where they feel comfortable, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you can always change it. There's no, there, you don't get penalized. You can change it, you can cancel it. So I've got like 36 people, and it, you know, sometimes it goes up, sometimes it goes down, but they pay me like a significant amount each person for all of these things. Sometimes they just want me to review products so they can decide okay. if they're going to buy it and then that gets me um influencer so i've i've hooked up with um different artists who it's like okay um i'm gonna make you an affiliate with my company you get 10 percent of all the sales like the commissions that you have a code so i have like a code reina 10 right people can use my reina 10 get 10 percent off and i get that 10 percent commission oh. so i've made thousands of dollars like every month just with this affiliate code on my instagram and it's paying my business bills through well, COVID, yeah. right? Uh, that, that's a that's a great pivot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's wow. fantastic. So what? Uh, how, so what? How did you go on YouTube and uh, <laughs> watch uh, watch videos? How to do yeah, this? Or did you um, ask questions? Like, is there? She has four more degrees. Are you that yeah, yeah. I guess. <laughs> yeah. yeah, YouTube is great. There's also a website called uh, Lynda.com, and in Halifax, anybody with a uh, Halifax Regional Library card can access Lynda.com for free, and it's courses, free courses that okay. you can take, and some of them are YouTube. So they're on everything. You want to go learn how to do sound mixing? You can do a free Lynda.com course. Um, so just like the guys were saying before, using YouTube is great for stuff like that. Some of it was just being in the right place at the right time, just like the music industry. But the resources that are out there that people don't even know about. Like yeah. you know, we're we're just you know we're just like fumbling our way through getting going in this. And I remember you you messaged me a while back. Yeah, yeah. You were I watching saw your something. YouTube. <laughs> and you said that's fantastic. And then you said, okay, so like for Patreon, for example, uh, is there a certain uh, level you have to uh, get to before you can use no, the platform? No, um, that's great. But when I was messaging you, I want to help you get your YouTube to make you money, right? right. Yeah. So with YouTube, in order, so I make great money on YouTube as well. Um, and, and I also use YouTube as a board to license my videos, and that's how I ended up on Stephen Colbert, and, and that's okay. how I get viral content. And then the more viral content you get, the more people are trying to license. And interesting enough, I actually hire musicians to write me backing tracks to my stuff, right. and then they, we're, it's kind of like a you scratch my back, I scratch sure. yours. But you, right? you, say, but you must have a team, because there's just no way that <laughs> in, a, in an eight-hour day you can teach pilots how to survive. <laughs> you know, a manager to have a baby. Third, have a baby. Maybe yeah. you know, have 13, <laughs> manage to have a relationship with your wonderful husband and still spend like what seems like an enormous amount of time online just, just lining all this stuff up. Well, I, I've been lining it up for 13 years, so now it's yeah. kind of an automated ship, sure. right? Yeah. And I definitely hire other people when I need to. Um, I love hiring PR people, like uh, writing um, press releases and distributing them is, is incredibly taxing and it's like throwing a dart in the dark. You don't know what you're going to get, but yeah. you, you like that's money that's well spent. Uh, hiring photographers is well spent. I've taken some courses from photographers just because then we were able to become more self-sufficient and learn yeah, more Sean's stuff. Yeah, Sean's taken some great pictures of you Yeah, my, my husband actually got himself into this niche market where he's able to, he's been hired now locally to do a lot of underwater photography oh, cool. and videography for music videos and movies um, 
uh, he he's done work for Tom Fitzgerald um, be, because he's he just gear, he's right? one of the only people who knows how to do it now, and we just saw that as a opening, so we went and took so, it. So did you always have the vision, though, Stephanie? Like that's what you like. I guess from, from Sean's eye perspective and Maurice's perspective with Barristools, for example, we just we went off on a, on, a, on a way and we had no idea what we were doing to start it off. And there's things that we have. We're great ideas people. We're not detailed people all the time. Yeah. People say, well, why can't you put a five videos on a night because that's when I had time to do it or, or felt like doing it or whatever the case may be. I mean, I didn't really want to learn video editing, but you're, you yeah. kind of plug along. Did you do it that way? Or yeah, did you? I really did do it that okay. way. And um, having my husband take interest, I actually farm all the video editing out to him. I find it really tedious. <laughs> so it's just great that you have a husband. Uh, <laughs> I'll, tell yeah. you, I'll tell you, I, and once again, spouses, like I'll tell you, like um, if, if it wasn't for Leslie, my, my partner, yeah. uh, I know that my, my live streams and a lot of stuff, we learned this together in, in the mm -hmm. last year because yeah. this pandemic yeah. and outside of that when you get so wrapped up and we're learning on a learning curve that's so quick and we're trying to get this jammed mm -hmm. in uh, I we would have had we'd had very little time to spend with each other yeah so we're doing stuff together so what's yeah. like with, with Sean like Sean's a big part of your business yeah. so well is, I, and is I he pay actually, him. yeah he's part he's an employee <laughs> yeah, and, yeah he's an employee yeah. of mine I'm, right yeah. I'm the boss <laughs> yeah so sometimes your personal time you employ your competitors she your, said it. She I said, I just repeated well, your it. your yeah. personal I time and your professional that. time I actually do kind of like, that's like sometimes that's the only time you get to see them is when you go to work together sometimes. We, you know. we go on so many amazing adventures because of this mermaid work. And it's really funny because sometimes I am I get really burnt out or discouraged. Mm -hmm. um, I'm the face. And because of that, you know, I've experienced some bad stuff. I, I had a Fox News article come out about me that was good, but the comments on it and the people harassing me from it were just yeah. horrific. Um, I've coined this term, uh, Merverts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just the Go fact you have to come up with a yeah, word for it. Yeah. That should tell you everything you need to know. Yeah. Um, I was in a tabloid once, which was really hard on me because it coincided with my mom passing away suddenly right. and uh, a friend of mine drowning at the same time. It was like three, wow. three huge things right in a row there. Um, and so sometimes when I'm down, Sean's the one kind of picking me up and get and pushing me and being like, "No, like I don't want you to miss this opportunity. You're going to be mad if you miss That's it." That's awesome. Um, but it's really like, uh, I think the, the key to my success is that uh, I did a lot of this during my downtime. So right now where we have COVID, you guys can't go out and do regular shows. Now is the time to lay these foundations because it's going to pay off for you always. It's going to keep coming off. Like Mo said that I, you know, I published books um, and I did that during a brief period of unemployment and uh, where my mermaid business was kind of off season at the time. Right. And that's still, that's been like ten years, and I'm getting royalties from that that's still. Awesome. Uh, I sell, you know, we license our photos; they end up in books. One of my photos was on the cover of a New York Times bestseller. That gets me royalties and stuff. It's um, being an artist is like you want multiple income streams, things that well, are going to keep paying. You don't have a manager to look after any of this. I would Why love pay a manager <laughs> if you get it figured out? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I would personally love a manager or an agent, but I have yet to find somebody who can do as good a job ah, as me. Well, <laughs> and, and that's a great point. And that's a very great. Good point. Point. Yep. If you get it figured out, and yeah. I mean, uh, uh, what are you gonna give me that I can't give myself? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I, I won't name names or whatever, but it's like if you can do something just as well as yeah. somebody else, why are you gonna? Because you're lazy. I mean, I'd rather put that money yeah. to, towards better spend. I know, you know, definitely as I growing and I'm gonna become a mom, like I'm gonna have to accept, uh, you know, farming some more of my stuff out if I want to be able to well, have the that. The village will get balance, bigger. That's you know, all. and yeah. that's just it. it are you it, able to delegate now? You have you know, like 13 other yeah, mermaids. I, I delegate, mean, maybe you can have right. a head mermaid or a manager mermaid. Exactly. Or, that's the plan. That is totally the plan. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, like YouTube is a really great untapped market for. Um, musicians and I would also say licensing your music for YouTubers is a great untapped market so as someone who makes YouTube videos I buy songs through a website called Epidemic Sound and when I buy those songs and I use them in my video I'm able to monetize my video and then that artist is then monetized as well okay um, I've also I had a YouTube series for a few years called Mermaid Monday and I hired a musician to write the theme song for that and mm. so he got paid I got paid and we both you know got like this mutual benefit from the video doing well um, but with YouTube like there are some restrictions like you need to hit a thousand subscribers before mm -hmm. you can monetize so mm -hmm. if you haven't done that yet that's going to be your first big thing is push for subscribers yeah, get we subscribers. do it all the time and what is the yeah. push like what, what did uh, just like what the guys were talking about before you know linking it on social media asking your friends one of the things I did um, you know 
bands have, you, you guys got your logos and stuff, put your logo on a postcard. You can get postcards so cheap through Vistaprint, like super cheap, like cents per, per postcard. And uh, instead of a business card, use a postcard. People hang on to the postcards more. And it's got your YouTube on the back and your website on the back. And you give it out at every single gig you do. Mm. We do that with the mermaids. You you get a mermaid postcard. The kids keep it because they love it. They're That's not a big gonna, picture. Yeah. They're not going to throw it out. It's a beautiful picture. I've had clients tell me they've had them on their fridge for 10 years. Mm. Yeah. You flip it over, there's all my social media. There's right. my YouTube. There's my Instagram. Here's a discount code for you, too. <laughs> you know, whatever's going to well, get you thing, coming merchandise. Back. You know, like bands sell T-shirts and hats and masks. Now I got mine. You know. And there's but, a lot of but you but you sell tails. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, there's a lot of built-in merch in, once you unlock these different tiers. So Patreon has built-in merch where it's no cost to you. Like you're just you're just designing it, putting your logo on it, whatever, and it's going out there, and and you're not having to front that cost. Um, YouTube's the same way. Once you get to that 1,000 subscribers, you unlock Teespring, and you can you know you put the Persuaders logo on stuff. They handle everything for you. You just get the paycheck. And every time someone goes to watch your video on YouTube now, at the bottom, it's auto-generated Persuaders merchandise. You don't have to link it. You don't have to do anything. Right. It's there. So, like, YouTube is a really good thing. Um, and um, their monetization, it, it has gotten less over the years. Like, they've made it, made it a little bit more difficult. So you want as much original content as possible. Right. Um, but covers are still, you can still make money from covers. It's just that you split it with the original artist right. kind of thing, right. right? So you can still have <laughs> Or get shut down altogether. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, yeah. well, that's the thing. But, like, with, like, with, with YouTube, for example, like, the, the, that stream, like, for example, like, the pandemic started a year ago. But this, obviously, you know, uh, you must have been driving on the on, on, uh, online, like, you know, the YouTube and all this. This must have been going almost since the since the day you started this. It like, did, and, like, any time... Because a lot of people weren't thinking about that back then. I got some really good advice from a mentor. Um, mermaid Linden is this hugely successful uh, mermaid performer in California. She does parties for every famous person you can imagine. She's, she's there doing parties and events, video games, movie releases. She's there doing it. And she gave me this really great um, piece of advice one and she says when you're dealing with the drama or you're dealing with toxic people or you're dealing with um, you know a gig fallout or something or just all that negative stuff take all that energy that you would be putting into that and put it back into yourself instead and mm. it sounds so simple but sometimes I have to ground myself and remind myself so that year that I had the tabloid mm. and my mom mm. passed away and my friend passed away I was getting so wrapped up in that that I couldn't do anything creative or when I was sick at the beginning of all of this you know I couldn't be creative couldn't do anything and it's like instead of taking all this energy to kind of fight this and be negative and feel down what's one thing I can do for myself okay well I mean I can I can film a YouTube video or right. I can get online and start interacting with my fans and sometimes it is just the five minutes you steal here or there um, but it does get to a point that once you get big enough the analytics work in your favor um, I've got almost a hundred thousand fans across my platforms I've got like um, 36,000 on Instagram and 30,000 on uh, Facebook. Facebook and stuff and I've got them verified too um, which just is like the little check mark it's right. like this is a real person <laughs> <laughs> well, then it's not just, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're not a robot, yeah. 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 Robot, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so I just, I, that's what she said. And then she also told me, and it's, again, it's so obvious, but she says the cream rises to the top, right? So just keep putting in that hard work, and even when you're getting discouraged, it is going to come up. Um, and you just want to be efficient with things. So if it's easier for the bands to hire someone to do their press kit or something, then it, that's money well spent. I'm not judging yeah. that. You sure. Know? Like, well, it's what you, you, know, you go to what your, your, your strengths. Your strengths are, for yeah. sure. Now, I had a question for you because I'm, I'm curious because, I mean, you seem so freaking busy. I'm just, like, are you worried about burning out? Are you worried about oh, yeah. to come up I, with new content? Yeah, because I, definitely, I definitely get to the burnout phase. I'm feeling real burned out right now because I've got the all-day morning sickness with the oh, pregnancy. Oh, God, love it. Um, so so my husband and I will do things in bursts. Um, a lot of social media now has the ability to schedule your posting. So you can sit down on right. a Sunday, get a bunch of stuff out, but then have it pop up over the next several So it looks weeks. like you're doing it in sequence. Yes. Yeah. 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 So we try to do that. We try to make use of things like hashtags and stuff because it'll become relevant. And the nice thing is you can always go in and edit it. So if something happens and you're like, ooh, maybe I didn't want that post to come out that day, you yeah. can change it. Um, so is, is Sean a big part of like of your social media planning? Do you guys nope. Sit down? <laughs> nope. That's my strength. Wow. He does wow. the content. Um, yeah. He does all the filming, um, drones, underwater, above water. 
Um, but it really does did, take a team, though. It editing, does, yeah. The editing part of it is huge. The editing is huge. The yeah. editing takes so long. Um, I will cry so over editing. I hate it so much. <laughs> um, but yeah, and I mean, I definitely get burnt out, but I'm, I'm lucky that I'm kind of at the point where I put the time in now that it's kind of a self-running machine, and it can get that way for artists, too. Like, you can get to that point, but it definitely you've got to maximize your down period. So we're in COVID. People aren't doing shows as much right now. So instead of seeing it as this negative, see it as like, oh, I've got this time to do this. I'm going to dedicate this to this. I'm going to watch the videos. I'm going to set up all these things. We're going to get you monetized on YouTube. Yeah. Well, <laughs> then, and you got, you know, but that's the thing. Like, I mean, like the we've been dealing, we've been in this pandemic for a year now, and some of us are, you know, finding our way in that. And you had this going along before that. So really, the pandemic. Like the, it wasn't a huge pivot for you. It was almost like now, it was a break. now I finally yeah, get time yeah. to do these other things I've been trying to do, and, yeah. and 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 the business is kind of running itself. And like I'm sure you're taking bookings for that you've had to book and cancel and book and cancel depending on how the yeah we've done some TV mostly we've just done filming because <coughs> did you do yeah okay. because they're able close to sets, right? they're able to do close sets so we've done filming mostly which I still did pregnant I mean I'm at the point now where it's showing so it can't yeah. really but you can um, send someone else all but to I can do send it. someone else yeah. right um, we're still making content um, we have a private pool booking every Sunday with a it's like a close set like a closed space where we maintain all the COVID restrictions we do our filming we turn out a YouTube video and that and goes it must out. be like training you guys must you have to stay in shape i mean you oh must have God. like yeah you get together and that you know you're working on your yep. routines and stuff i mean really yeah and it's helping everybody in the team you know um they've only gotten a handful of paid gigs but it's still very rewarding for them because we get to be social we get to be physically active it's in a safe space yeah. and we're not losing those skills that we've worked so hard for for me that's mm -hmm. something that was always a fear in the back of my mind after losing music and i mean i didn't totally lose music mo yeah. will tell you i'm a big karaoke singer yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no. but I, I, I've, I've had a bit of a uh, I'll say epiphany here. Uh, one of the things, so when we started this whole bar stool, so, and Mo, you were in the same boat. Um, you had to do something. Yeah. Nothing was going on. We kind of did it to kind of scratch an itch, but we it was just like, ah, if it had. With our thing, it just kind of, I, I seriously thought four months I'd be back out playing and I wouldn't be doing this anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Then the next, so four months becomes six, becomes eight. Yeah. And then we were kind of forced into what we've been doing because and people now you have put caught the work onto it. into it now you well we do back. yeah but no. here's the thing we didn't take it seriously at the beginning it was just pardon my friend shits and giggles oh, and yeah. it who was. does right yeah. right well it sounds like you did well yeah. i mean sort of like i was really resentful at the beginning i didn't want this to be my job i was going to be a teacher I, right. I i spent all this money i, I went to school for <laughs> so long like uh, but that's the old story how many people go to college for take a degree and then they have to do something totally a 90 degree turn from what they went to school for yeah i mean half of the most famous musicians in the world you know, I've got history degrees or they yeah. got, you know, whatever. But, you know. you know, I still find ways to use my education. That's right. My first degree is in child development, so I'm with kids all oh. the time. Mm -hmm. My second degree is in education, and we do an environmental education aspect of what we do with Halifax Mermaids. That's how we get in with groups like Dalhousie and the Bedford Institute Keep any Institute oceans of clean and all and, that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so. Stephanie, to be fair, like, the biggest thing that I remember about, because, again, I've don't want to book your site for a long time because my daughter was a yeah, freaking mermaid, I saw the right? Video. She, so, yeah. and Cute. with that, I saw it was like it wasn't just fantasy make believe, but it was it was giving kids some innocence back, you know. That's and not a, only that, yeah. it, it, was, it was it was they were inspired to do a physical activity because yeah. you have to be a good swimmer to pull that stuff yeah. off, right? Um, we we've we run a number of uh, charity swims um, where we get kids and we put them in tails, even if they're in life jackets, and right. we're teaching them to swim. And they're so motivated that they want to go out and then take swimming lessons. Um, there's a big gap once girls kind of hit puberty where they're not being as physically active they're not being in sports and their 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 particular sports are not getting the same kind of funding as boys because the interest level is just not the same mm -hmm. and so if we can get them swimming and boys love it too you know there's tons of costumes for men I've got two men on my team um, and they're very popular <laughs> well actually the like those uh, those uh, mono fins I mean there's like these guys and uh, I mean Michael, Michael Phelps. There's, yeah, there's professional <laughs> swimmers that like they they, they they free dive with these things. Yeah. And, and that's Have you met that, my friend you know. Jason Momoa over here? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, free diving, 
<laughs> free diving is done with I'm not as good a swimmer, though. They yeah. use mono, mono fins, and it's they go very, down. You know. It's very empowering. Like, what I say to people, like, you see cosplay. Cosplay is a big thing. Yes. Adults, like, wearing the costumes, dressing up like their favorite superheroes and mm -hmm. stuff. And it's escapism. It's a little bit of fun from, from the daily grind. Um, and the mermaid stuff is very similar, except that when you put on a cape, you're not going to fly. But if you put on that fin, that mm. fin is going to do the work for you, mm. and you are going to feel strong. I'm not strong on land. I'm very clumsy. I'm not coordinated. Woo! I That's right. They're, cheering, they're cheering the fact <laughs> that you're clumsy and not coordinated. Thank you, people back there. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, if Bev Bowers is not back there, I'll be very surprised. <laughs> Anyway, I'm sorry. You go That's ahead. That's all right. Me. I love yeah. it. I love this. It's been so long since I've been hanging out. Yeah. Well, we weren't expecting that down there. No. It's all good. It's all good. It's Sony all good. must be winning a hockey game. Yes, I think it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, like it's like a, I, I try to get adults, especially, to tap into play. Um, and even I'm not saying you guys have to go and put on mermaid tails. Although Rick Mercer did it. We got. I do it. <laughs> yeah, I, I do it. That episode. Rick yeah. Mercer did it. Well, yeah. um, but I I want adults to see the value in imagination and play. We kind of yes. rush kids through the phases. Absolutely. They're they're in preschool and it's like okay, write your letters, write your numbers, and it's like but you know play is still a valid form of learning. When I'm doing a mermaid gig and we're doing a party, the kids are being physically active. We're talking about the environment. They're working on their coordination. They're really happy. They're playing pretend. But some adults just want to steal that from them and just be like, well, you know, she's not real. And it's like, well, they don't yeah. have to think I'm real to be able it's like to have It's like telling a little kid though, with Santa Claus, an yeah. Easter Bunny. It's like, come on, what are you doing, right? But the, and here's the thing. There's a ton of pictures of the three of us on the internet from the 80s in spandex. So why wouldn't yeah, we yeah. go? Yeah. Why wouldn't we dress up as yeah. Mer I think that'd be very cool. <laughs> that was cosplay, wasn't it? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. I think that'd be very Boston. cool, though. I mean, like, really, I mean, it, it, like. You know, I think it would give perspective of what these folks do. Right? I've never had a person that I've convinced to try it regret it. You get a lot of hesitation. You have people who are nervous around the water, some people who can't even swim. I get them in there. I build them up. I help them. And it's like giving them the keys to a new world. All it's right. like they I will tell you right now, Sean and I will put on the monofins and we'll be on I'll your show. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Say when. We'll do it. Yeah. 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 I will drown. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll just, keep you safe. Don't all right. Worry. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. We'll bring the cameras. We'll make sure we do the 500 crunches before we show up on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you guys have seen the Murbys in Newfoundland. Yeah. They're the these big burly men who raised um, like a million dollars for mental health by dressing up like mermen, yeah. and they're just regular men, you know, big beards, bellies, um, different sizes, and um, different. She ages. says bellies, and we all sucked our belly. <laughs> and said, Did you get that? <laughs> well. <laughs> Part of their thing is yeah. like uh, body positivity for men, which you don't get. Like, like it's all for body positivity for women, and mm. part of theirs is body positivity for men. Like, yep. you, you know, you can have fun. And they made these amazing calendars, and they raised between the two years a million dollars. That's from incredible. That's in incredible. Newfoundland, Murbys. You know, I think. I mean, before Murbys. we wrap this up, I think I, I think we all come to agree, and uh, all the all all the panel tonight, every all you guests. I mean. The one thing you guys all share in common is that none of this is by accident. No. And there's a lot of hard work. I mean, when you're dealing with, like, we, we, the, the theme of, we were talking about online success and all that. There's no magic bullet. There's no, no. there's no, there's no, it's all about hard work and, like, sticking to it and And persevering through adversity. And like, you had issues and you wanted to do you know, something and, else, creative outlet, and, and good on you. That's you know, awesome. Nothing came, not one of you people, not, not, nobody, nothing came by by chance. It was no good luck. It was, well, and I mean, you have there to, is good luck, but you make your own luck. You have to be work. ready to jump at an opportunity. Absolutely. Yes. That's what you need. You need to be able to jump at it. So when I'm thinking ahead, I've actually accomplished so many of my goals with this industry. So it's like, so what are some of the big things I'm hoping might happen? And, and, and even if I don't know how to make them happen what can i do so i'm at least ready for those things to when happen. they do approach yeah so yeah. i, I want to throw so because you mentioned goals you mentioned mentors you mentioned a bunch of things and i think this is going to be very important because i like this stuff a lot <laughs> give me i'm going to guess you read three or four mm. pma books that taught you about setting goals and those things. is that a fair statement sort of like, I read a book that really helped me um, years ago called The Happiness Trap. Yep. And it's uh, it's about um, you're allowed to have bad feelings, and it, it doesn't mean that we sit and stew in them, but we acknowledge them, and we don't pretend that life is hunky-dory. And we also tell ourselves, like, okay, I have a great history of getting through shit. I'm going to keep getting through shit. Right and because I went through so much adversity, and, I mean, I still technically struggle with a lot of it. I'm still chronically ill. Like, I'm, it's COVID right now. Like, that's not easy on anybody's no. mental health. 
Um, but it's just kind of recognizing that these moments are temporary and that you can get through them and that it's okay to to feel bad. You don't have to force yourself to be super positive all the time. And I've connected with a whole new generation and a whole new group of people through my social media by talking about that stuff. Like my pregnancy has been really difficult and because I have illnesses I'm at other higher risks. So instead of presenting this image online where I'm like, ooh, pregnancy, lovely, yeah. you know, flowers, I'm just like, this sucks. I'm miserable. <laughs> like, uh, I can't do everything I like. Well, it's, it's funny you mention that. Today, it's funny you mention that because I have some friends like uh, our, our a couple of our buddies are ADD, and I'm a bit ADD. I'm ADHD. And, okay, yeah. so OCD. So I've got the weirdest OCD you're ever going to hear in your life. I'm a germaphobe. I will not. I, I say this all the time, and it's funny every time I say it. I will not touch a doorknob. I will not touch a shopping cart with yeah. my bare hands. I will drop anything on any surface and pick it up and eat it. Does that make any sense? <laughs> yeah. That's weird, eh? Right? I but think, it's a I real think, thing. Yeah, and I have ADHD, and I actually um, think that's part of the reason why I can juggle so many things. Mm. I, it's like a superpower. It lets me mm. kind of have all these balls in the air and, and do all I these I think things. it's just simply inspirational myself. I, I'm, I'm, I'm inspired by you. I've always been inspired by you. Since the time we very, very first said you, I've always That's told That's because him, I sang whole lot of love. No, but I, <laughs> oh, there you go. But, I told, yeah, but I told, I've told everybody I could tell, but I was so proud of you. I said, like, she's fearless. You're fearless. You've been fearless since the time. And here you are. You're talking, like, just the things that you do. Like, you know, any one of those things is a career. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and here you are. You're just, like, bouncing around and doing them all. And, and with a smile on your face, you're having a family. Uh, you know, you got a wonderful husband who's supportive, and he's in, he's with you. You're running a business. Like, I think it's fantastic. I think you're inspirational. And yeah, I hear you. All the hard work. No, that goes it's to true. It. It's, it's been a pleasure to have you on the show. You know, so I want to ask you another question. Obviously, you're going to be busy next year having babies, but what's next for you? Yeah. So, uh, um, all the stuff that we've been filming is going to come out towards the end of the year and next year. Nice. Um, th I'm hoping to uh, once I've had the baby, um, resume giving lessons again because Patty, the group that does scuba diving certification. Um, um, they've recognized that this industry is booming now, so they're actually going to offer uh, mermaid certification because they want people to be safe. Oh, you yes. know, just oh, yeah. people. That's cool. It is an issue we face that um, parents put their kids in tails, send them out, and they can't swim, no, or adults try it. Um, no one's drowned yet, but God forbid, right? Yeah. So. Um, it is really popular. So Might I'm become an Olympic sport. Who knows? No, no, no. <laughs> and I'm the guy. I just put the tails on and give it a try. Right? I'm a, that's the way I've always I've yeah. always done it. Yep. So I'm going to get that certification so that I can then be an instructor and certify yeah. other people. One more thing on your list to do. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I just uh, I personally I would like to step back from doing some of the events and do more of the filming aspect. Do more of the consulting. I've done a lot of consulting for underwater stunts on films and stuff, and I've really enjoyed that. Um, and there's some stunt certification I could get once I've had the baby that I'd like to get and um, it's just be really fun but I've really hit most of my goals that's you awesome. know awesome. I just want to keep working with more um, I love doing music videos so, so what day of the month do you take off <laughs> Sundays <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, no mermaid Monday tail flip Tuesday yeah. <laughs> fin flip Friday <laughs> we get them all <laughs> well, yeah, this, this is great that's fantastic yeah. well you know what we've uh, we've covered a lot of racetrack tonight um, I think uh, anybody that's watching this is going to go back and watch it. Is going yeah. to going to see that none of this stuff happens by accident. No. Um, you know, it's uh, and again we said as we were wrapping up, reality TV I think has given people the sense that oh everybody gets famous right away for doing nothing, which is it's, it's a lottery it, mentality. It, right? it, and you, you know, guys yeah. educated us otherwise, right? So and that was very cool. And um, but the thing is, here's what I all, I'm also taking from it: you do a little bit of the work and you go and you study. You can get in the game just as much as anybody can. Yeah. So if you're not in the game, it's on you. Knowledge you, is power. You became a mermaid and you couldn't swim. That's that was. That's a, literally what happened. My first awesome. date with my husband, I drowned. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dave became a bass player and he couldn't play bass, so that's kind of cool. Um, anyway, yeah. <laughs> Poor Dave. Yeah, and you're wondering why we don't go viral, but anyway. Yeah. Um, so I want to thank you. This has been super, super uh, for me. Very both inspirational. And, and educational, educational yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Um, but you know what? I'm sitting there going, this might not be as hard as what we old fellows think it might be, right? If we kind of just it's dial belief. into you a little must, bit. You of must have had a lot of belief in yourself, uh, or, or maybe you're, you're maybe not initially, it's but friggin' stubborn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah. Perseverance. That's what's yeah. Stubborn, yeah. Tenacity. Yeah. Yep. And I think what you guys are doing is great because it's given people a chance to connect again. It, that's what we're really missing right now during COVID is the the chance to connect and collaborate and just uh, feel um, like part we, of the village. Yeah, part of the village. That's that's like the theme here. So since we started, that was the village. 
Well, and, and, and don't forget Molson. <laughs> well, I love her. She beat me to it. She beat me to it. That's awesome. And this, the three of us actually started a conversation at big leagues. Yeah, before COVID, actually, just, yeah. be, just, March, be, just before the COVID started. Yeah, yeah, we're our one year anniversary next month. So yeah, we, we had an idea, and Mo's like, "You don't even know what you're doing yet." And it's like we didn't. It was just kind of like I was doing a radio show uh, about sports, and no sports was taking place. Yeah, and we and just I knew when you started music. this and all that. That's this is it here. Yeah, this is it. And away we went, and it just kind of morphed into yeah. some pretty cool stuff. But. Um, we get to meet cool people like you, which is yeah, really good. Cause it's we bolt- want, and we want to inspire. We want people to be inspired. That's the whole thing. Yeah, right? I want to inspire people. That's the whole purpose of the mermaid thing. Um, it, it, I'm not saying you have to go put on a tail, but I want to inspire you to live your dreams and also allow yourself to have fun and mm. not feel guilty about it. Like We're You can done. have fun. Well, you know what? And I think a dot is the perfect note to end on. Yep. I don't think we need anything else beyond that. He's Thanks, saying, guys. He's saying to no, me, I don't just, be Columbo. That's I, what he's saying. <laughs> look, and what does he do? Thank you for being on here. He can't. He can't he's got a, he's got a rocket for break to the very end. Nice to eat little fish bump. Thanks a lot, guys. Ooh, fish fish bump. What is a fish bump? Fish bump. Oh, fish I can bump. do that. What is that? Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, Stephanie, thank you so much. Thanks so much. Stephanie, uh, thanks so much for being on. Thanks, guys. Best fishes. <laughs> uh, best fishes. We're out. She's so efficient. <laughs>